Hi, my name is Kelly and this is Home Broke School. Today I wanted to show you a new unit that I'm slipping in. Um, it's a marine biology unit and the reason why we're adding this unit in in between our around the world units is because we moved into our new house about five months ago and um, before we had moved in we had gotten the hardwood floors all refinished and living in the home for the past five months all of the polyurethane started peeling. So we are going to the beach for three weeks this summer so then the crew can come in and redo all the hardwood floors which means we need to move all of our things into the basement so that they can have free access to the floor so it's pretty much a nightmare but the exciting thing is we're going to be at the beach for three weeks which will be super fun so normally I put together my own unit studies and I love doing that so much but because of the really tight timeline um, typically I take you know anywhere from three to four months to slowly buy books and pre-read them and um, create kind of our own unit study around it. I didn't have time for that. So I looked online and I actually found that The Good and the Beautiful had a kind of join our newsletter and get one of our unit studies for free. So I've been looking at these unit studies for a while now. You know, they have a lot of appeal because they're already put together. They already have crafts and things ad added into it. And I figured it would be good to try something, it's free, and then I can um, see if I like it or not. So I went ahead and downloaded the Marine Biology Unit, I printed it all off, I have it all tabbed out, and then I went through all of the books that I purchased because I like adding beautiful picture books and projects, and I went through and just kind of tabbed everything out. So I am going to go through this curriculum as it's laid out. Um, we will be doing this daily. We will not be doing math or English language arts other than a little bit of reading and a little bit of um, writing because we are going to be at the beach and it's going to be a fun time. Um, but for an hour in the morning or so or when it gets really, really hot later in the afternoon, I thought that this could be a fun thing to do. This unit will probably take us four to five weeks, so I think I'm going to start it two or three weeks before we leave. And then what would be lovely and what I'm hoping for is that last week of our three week beach trip we can do either something really light or hardly any time at all. So I went through and I tabbed all of our um, projects and all of the books and the page numbers that we're going to be using and all of the read alouds that we did. I also went through and printed out the additionals. So it comes in one giant PDF and I'm assuming most people just print it all out from start to finish and kind of put it in one binder. My brain doesn't work that way. I really like the projects kind of in a separate place and the teacher manual in a separate. So I just bound them in two separate things. And what I'm trying to do is have everything to be as movable as possible because we have a lot of things to bring to the beach if we're going for three weeks. So that's what we are using for kind of our spine um, for this particular unit study. And then I pulled a f couple fun art projects that I just want to do. I went to art school and art is my favorite. So um, this one's really fun. Um, you take acrylic paint and um, <clears throat> glue and then you mix it together in a bottle. And then you go ahead and kind of make this kind of puffier paint raised area. And then once that's dry, once you've finished kind of your black and white puff paint area, then um, you could go ahead and watercolor it afterwards, maybe even add a little sand to it. So I thought this would be really fun. Um, we're going to be talking about math with this particular unit, and um, this is a shell mandala, so this is kind of, you have to organize the shells by size and then kind of make your own patterned kind of geometry for little kids. These are really fun, so I thought that that would be fun to do. Um, we have a coral reef watercolor that we're going to do <clears throat> using some of our books as um, inspiration. Um, I thought this one looked really fun. We could do with seashells. It's kind of a heavier cardstock, and then you can glue on stones or sand or seashells and make a picture. So I thought that one might be fun. Um, cat sand casting in the sandbox. So this, you can use plaster of Paris and kind of make your own molds of things and um, 
the sand kind of sticks to it and then you could do seashell art. So what you do is you basically take a mold or you can make your own pattern. You dig into the sand and you kind of make the pattern you want. So let's say you wanted to do a heart. So you would dig into the sand and make a depression of that heart. And then you can line it with seashells or stones that you want to show at the top of your piece when you flip it over. And then you fill it with plaster of Paris. You leave it for a couple hours. And when you take it out, then it has that heart shape and then has the sand and the seashells all embedded into it. It looks super fun. My kids will love that. So we're going to do that. And then lastly, we're going to be talking about man in the sea kind of the, as the last lesson while we're at the beach. I want to do a kind of a beach cleanup, um, you know, a couple hours where we walk around and pick up trash and things. And then we want to talk about how we influence um, with our trash and um, global warming and things. And then um, we're going to talk about lighthouses as part of that. So we're going to do this really pretty lighthouse picture. <clears throat> so those are our kind of projects that we're going to do in addition to the ones that we decide to do from The Good and the Beautiful. Okay, we have a couple of spines that I'm going to use. So these two I plan on using kind of predominantly throughout the unit. Um, one small square, these books are gorgeous and I love them because they're not too intense. And then they also have a lot of like fun projects that you can do um, throughout the books. Um, I found that these books work really well for my kids and I'm really excited to use this particular one. Um, it has like a lot of really fun things in here that I'm super excited to try. So um, we're going to go ahead and use this book mostly at the beach but I'm also going to pull a couple things in the beginning. And then we have Ocean Anatomy. So I have Nature Anatomy and I love it so much. I think it's so beautiful. I find Nature Anatomy a little difficult to use because it's encompassing such a broad subject, nature, that, you know, when I do a unit like amphibians or bugs and I try to use the Nature Anatomy book, it just, there's only a page or two, if any, and there's not a lot of content. So I'm super excited to use Ocean Anatomy because I think the books are beautiful, um, but because this is focusing on, on a smaller subject, with it, which is just ocean, then I'm hoping I can use utilize this book in a more efficient way. And I flagged two pages that we're going to be using for our art journal. So one day we're going to be talking about sand and the pieces of elements that are part of sand and we're going to bring our microscope and do that. And then um, we're also going to be talking about um, the anatomy of a beach. So I want to use this as kind of an inspiration maybe for a piece of art that we put in our art journal. So those are the two books I'm using as a spine. Um, I have three books that we're using kind of more like reference. So we have the Big Book of Blue. I love these books. Um, we've used them in the past. We use the Big Book of Mammals. We use the Big Book of Birds. And these are great. So I'm just going to take um, a day or two to go ahead and read um, some pages as we discuss things. So. Um, those sticky notes that I have in the Good and the Beautiful book tells me which pages that I'm going to be reading. You know, so as we discuss seals, then we might go through this two-page spread. So this is a really great book that my kids love. And then we have Ocean Atlas by Tom Jackson and Anna Dorchikovic. I probably mutilated that. Sorry. Um, so this one looks really good. I'm not going to use all of this book. It has some things in here that um, we've already touched on, like volcanoes. But there's some really cool things in here, like the underwater vents and um, ocean trench. So this looks really cool. My son will really dig the submarines in this. So there's um, a lot of this book we're going to be using. And I think it's really beautiful that they have this stunning illustration. This is kind of totally my jam. Um, they have content that's written really well. Um, it's spaced out really well <laughs> visually. Um, and I like actually the content that I'm reading in here. And then I also like that they have um, some photography in here to kind of balance out. And some books don't do it well. I think this book does it really well, where it balances out kind of the art. So we're actually looking at some live photography of the area. So we're going to be using that as a reference. And then the last book I'm going to be pulling in is Whales. 
So there is a chapter in The Good and the Beautiful that talks about dolphins and whales. So I'm not going to be reading this cover to cover because it's just too much content for how little my kids are. But I am going to um, leave this out and let my kids kind of flip through it. And um, we might open it up, see what's interesting, read a couple pages, use it for art inspiration. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> And then the next thing I want to show you is a read aloud we plan on, I plan on doing. So this is Edison, The Mystery of the Missing Mouse Treasure. There are a couple books in this series. I bought this one and I think I got, yes, I got the astronomy one as well. So this is a story about a mouse. Um, he, obviously he's at sea and the photography or the illustrations in this are just so gorgeous. Um, there is a great story that goes along with it that everyone's raving about, um, but it doesn't look too long or too intense. It might take us, you know, three or four days to read a book like this, and it just looks really fun, and this is the kind of book that my kids and I really enjoy, captivates our attention, sucks us in with all the photos or the, all the illustrations, and um, my kids are still, they're five and seven, so they're still young. It's hard for them to sit through a really intense picture book unless I break it up into really small chunks. But this book is fantastic for them. So I'm really excited to try this. We haven't read anything um, by that author, and I'm excited to try that. Oh, another thing that goes with the good and the beautiful that I forgot to show you are these um, vocabulary cards. We're not really, um, I do vot vocabulary with our, my kids, but more I look through a book that we're about to read and I pull two or three words from that book that I think my children don't know. We discuss them, we animate them with our bodies, like um, we just did a book recently that had the word treasured in it, so we were talking about treasure, ooh, you know, so we kind of get that kinesthetic movement into it. So this really isn't my jam, but I thought I would try it because I do want to try the good and the beautiful, kind of how it's um, made. So apparently you just kind of read these out to the kids and then you stick it kind of on a wall um, and it's kind of like your vocab. They have some images up on that wall when you're done. And um, when I do the review of this unit, at the end of each of our units, I do a review and talk about what I like and I don't like, so I'll let you know how that goes. Okay, so more books. <clears throat> so for our picture books, we have a big stack of picture books for this unit. So let me put them over here so they're out of our way. So um, the more informational picture books I have is um, this one, so What Lives in a Shell. These are the Let's Read and Find Out books. I love these books so much. They start with a really cute, wonderful little story. And then as you go through the book, it gets more and more intense with the information. It does not go over my kid's head. I think it gives them just enough information to stay interested and engaged. Um, this is a book that I can read cover to cover. My kids love them, so we're going to be reading that. Of course, we have some Magic, tree bu tr uh, magic School Bus books because we love these. They have two different kinds of Magic School Bus books, and I'll show you some more later in our read-alouds for the kids. So some of them are kind of more illustrated and some of them are um, have more heavier pictures. And so I believe the Present series is the one that has heavier pictures. But my kids love the Magic School Bus and um, we're definitely going to be um, reading this. And this is also a book, sometimes I can read it cover to cover, I just kind of gauge my kids and their ability to focus and pay attention. Sometimes this, these kinds of books I have to split into two days. Okay, so more fun read-alouds that we have. Oh, I have one more Magic School Bus. So this is an example of um, one of the ones that are kind of more illustrated, which my kids also like. Um, I typically love illustrated books, but for my preference for like, um, you know, learning about a subject, I do like the Presents books better, uh, Magic School Bus Presents. Um, with the photography, but my kids love both of these, and I like that variety when I um, give them information. 
So then we have um, Secrets of the Seashore. These are Shine Light books. My kids are really into these. They really love it. So the idea is you shine a light underneath this picture and it shows kind of what the crab is looking at or kind of his bones or his exoskeleton. The crab is on the move, but there's another hunter nearby. And when you flip the page, then it shows the, um, the starfish through the paper, kind of, um, you know, the crab's in danger. So my kids really like that book. Um, I have Calypso Conch, and this is a tale of a queen conch and a peacock flounder. So this is just kind of a really fun read aloud. Um, the illustrations really um, aren't my favorite type of illustrations, kind of this um, washed out watercolor, but um, the story looked really cute, and I think my kids will like it. Um, the Selkie Girl, this looks wonderful. It won um, uh, an award, a traditional Scottish Tales Award. Um, this book looks stunning and beautiful, and um, the reviews were really good on it, and um, it just looks so pretty. Uh, Be a Big Hero by Jennifer Bacon. This book is about um, taking ownership and helping the environment. So this is one of the books that we're going to be reading when we do our beach cleanup. Um, but it's about a little boy who... Um, I, I haven't read it yet, but I think it's about a little boy who um, cleans up the ocean and, and works hard to make sure that the animals are safe. So that'll be a great book to read with our ocean cleanup. Swimmy by Leo Leone. This one reminds me of kind of Eric Carle um, imagery. And this is a really simple book that we'll read in one day. Um, some books I pick kind of more my son's level, who's seven. Um, he's also gifted, so he kind of likes really heavy, dense fact books. And then some books like this one I pick that are a little simpler because, um, you know, appeals to my five-year-old. And I, re I really don't think you can go wrong with a beautiful picture book. I still enjoy beautiful picture books. So um, this is a more fanciful book about a boy in the ocean and um, dreaming. And I think that, that this looked really fun. Okay. So Hello Lighthouse will also go with, um, this is by S uh, Sophie Blackhall. This will also go with our humans in the ocean. Um, unit, but this is kind of more um, story around a lighthouse and a family that lives there. Um, I think I might read this one with the Selkie Girl. And then there's a, an amazing movie. Um, I believe it's by a Irish company. It's kind of their version of Pixar that made it. It's called um, Song of the Sea, and it is simply gorgeous and stunning. So we might read those two books together and then watch that movie as kind of a fun night. Shark Lady, this is the true story of Eugene Clark. It's written by Jess Keating and this um, got a lot of really great reviews. Um, as much as possible when I do a unit, I like to include um, biographies or autobiographies so my kids can learn a little bit about the people who um, you know, helped us learn so much about these things. Inventors, things like that. So I've heard a lot of really good things about this book, and we don't own any in our library. Um, he wrote, this is Lawrence Pringle, um, illustrated by Merrill Henderson. Um, Lawrence Pringle wrote a series of books like this. So this is Octopus's Strange and Wonderful. And I've heard so many amazing things about this book, I wanted to check him out. So this is our first foray into his type of books, but um, they look very informative. My son is going to love a book like this. The illustrations are gorgeous, and um, I'm really excited to try this book out. It looks like it has a ton of really good information, um, and then also a story that kind of blends all that information in which is totally my jam and the books that I love the most. So I am going to try this and I will let you know what I think at the end of the unit. The Last Wonder of the World. This is by a biologist, Ernest Everest Just. It's by Melina Miguel. And um, this is about an African-American man who had a lot of struggles. And um, I think it was based 
Massachusetts, 1911. So he had a lot of struggles um, about uh, people accepting him, getting his degree. He, I think he actually moved to France. Yes, he moved to France because he had so much trouble in the United States and he became one of the most well-known scientists. Um, so I'm excited to read this book. I don't know very much about Ernest Everest just, so I'm excited to read this book just for myself. And I love learning with my children that way. Bats at the Beach, this is just a fun book that we had that I pulled into this unit. Um, our library is getting really large and we can't get through books all the time. Um, but this is just about bats who came to the beach and had a party at night. And it's just a really cute book that my kids love. Um, but we haven't read it in a while, so I thought I would pull it for this unit. And then we have Ocean Speaks, How Marine Tharp Revealed the Ocean's Biggest Secret. So this is by Jeff Keating, again, um, talking about, oh, so this is the same author as, author as the Shark Lady. So again, talking about, um, you know, real people who worked on the ocean. So typically I like to add women, people of color, minorities, but I also like to... I feel like there's a big push um, because there's so many books about um, white boys, so I try to like balance it because I do have um, a boy, and I do I don't want him to just be reading all books about um, white women. But um, for this unit, it's kind of heavier. Um, the two, the three that I have, um, two are about white women, and one is about an African American man. So we're gonna. Okay, so another book we have is Flotsam, and this book is a little different. Um, I lost the dust cover to this, but um, this is by David Weisner, and this book has, it's a picture book, and it has no words. So it is stunningly gorgeous. The illustrations are incredible, and what I like to do with my children with books like these, we have quite a few, is mommy will make up a story on this page, and then my son will continue, and then my daughter will continue, and then I will, you know, make something up. So we continue the story all together, um, blending our ideas all together. It really helps my kids with their creativity. And then um, I like to sometimes we'll go ahead and we'll illustrate our story and I'll write it down. And we have kind of a little book that we all created, which is really fun. So this is Flotsam. Um, for more books, we're going to be doing a little math conversation. Um, this is Swirl by Swirl, Swirls in Nature. It's about swirls in nature and not just the ocean, but I think it still pertains because kind of that shell pattern, and we're going to be talking about some seashells. But this is by Joyce Sidman, and um, this is about the golden rule, so um, kind of that spiral rule, that math equation. So we have um, spider webs, we have um, octopus curls, we have ram horn curls. So this is a really cute picture book that we're going to read. And then at the end, it had um, kind of more descriptions about the various things, um, talking about that golden rule and then the um, even in DNA, DNA cells. And then I'm going to do a little bit of a deeper dive with my son and the math on that. Um, I found a video that we're going to be using, I think it was National Geographic, that was talking about the math patterns that um, I'm going to watch with him, which he will totally dig. And then um, the last kind of read aloud book that we have, this will be just a fun thing that we'll do on a day off or at the end of the day. So I'm an artist. This is from my library. And this is about the movie Finding Nemo. So it's about how um, the creators did character studies and sketches and drawings and artwork to kind of inspire and storyboarding and um, I'm gonna I love stuff like this I think it's um really fun and interesting and I'm just gonna we're not gonna read this cover to cover but I'm just gonna kind of flip through this with my kids and then we're gonna go ahead and watch Finding Nemo which we've already seen but it's still a fun movie and I think that they might get a deeper understanding with reading those books so we have um, just some fun read-alouds that my kids will do at night. So I have Pete the Cat and the Underwater Adventure. 
and Pete the Scaredy Cat. These are books that are below my daughter's reading level, so these I can just put in her room and she can read those to herself as she's trying to fall asleep. And then we have the Norwal and Jelly books, so my son can read these on his own. Um, my daughter will need help, so I might read these with her. Um, typically what we do is I'll pick a character and she'll pick a character and we'll go ahead and we'll each read um, one of those characters and I can help her with the words that she has a little harder time with. Um, the only thing I don't like about these books is that um, it's all in capital letters and I don't know why. I, for a kid's book, it, it shouldn't be like that, but whatever. Can't be picky about everything. Um, a Day at the Seashore, so these are um, little golden books that my mom bought my kids um, when we found out that we were pregnant. So these I just pull out every once in a while. They're just cute, old school. They're nostalgic for me. And um, we'll go ahead and read this one night right before bed to my daughter. And then for my son, he's got a bunch that he could read on his own. They're Magic School Bus chapter books, The Wild Whale Watch. So these are really short chapter books that um, are at his reading level. So he can read these either to me or my husband or we can read these out loud. He can read them to his um, sister with me listening, and um, or I could read out loud to them. So I haven't really, I don't really assign my kids readers yet. Um, it's kind of like goes by the feeling of the day. So the Magic School Bus gets crabby. Um, this is below his reading level. This might even be something that my daughter and I could read together. So um, this is another one we're going to be doing. And then we have the Fly Guy Presents series. So there's a Fly Guy series that my son loves um, that is about kind of the story of this little fly guy, but the Presents series has certain topics that they talk about. And this is a lot like the Magic School Bus Presents, um, where it has kind of um, photography mixed in with the characters, and it talks a lot about facts, and my kids learn so much from books like this, and they love the story element that weaves it all the way through. So this is a really great book that we'll all read together. And then this is another one that my son will read probably to himself and then, um, or we might read together as a group, um, or my daughter might start to try to read something like this um, because this is a level two, but this has a lot of fun facts in it and we really love these National Geographic readers. So that's it for all of the books. And then we just have kind of the fun crafts and activities. So like I said, I'm not bringing our um, math or English language arts or anything. We're just going to be doing kind of fun ocean themed. Um, but I am bringing these Mindos. So these are really small, which is appealing to me because they don't take up a lot of space. Um, so I got Mindo. This is three and up for my daughter. And I got, uh, oh, this is eight and up that I got for my son. And this is um, five and up I got for my daughter. But they're little logic games. Um, and we haven't tried them yet, but I think that my kids are totally going to love them. So they have these little tiles that you can kind of lay out, and then they have these cards, and I'm assuming, yeah, um, we have a lot of logic games like this where it will start off easy, it'll go kind of medium, then harder, and then extra hard. Um, and then you have to try to figure out the pattern and lay the tiles in the correct pattern, and then you double check your answer. So um, these look really Kind of fun and something that'll be a little different. You know, while I'm cooking dinner or something that they can be doing this instead of watching TV or, um, yeah, being on their iPads while we're at the beach, which is something we want to avoid. And then um, I have this little um, Shark Adventure sticker book that um, I think my daughter will just like. I might put it on a couple of her assignments or something, or maybe she'll make some art with it. So I just have that for her that I pulled that we had already. Um, I have it these do-it-yourself wooden puzzles. We've already built a lot of these, but the two that I've been saving for an ocean unit are the um, seahorse and the octopus. And these are really um, cool. I actually really like these. Um, it's by Hans, Hans Craft Do-it-yourself supplies. But these, um, these are the last two we have. But these are perforated, and you can just easily pop them out and then it comes with some instructions on how to build it and these have just been great. It's for kids five and up. My daughter is five and she still needs some help putting this together but my son is seven and he can fly through one of these in like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. 
um, and he these really appeal to him. So that'll be a fun thing that we can do. And then we have um, I saw it first. So this is the first time I'm getting a product from um, I saw it. They have a couple different things and a couple different um, focuses in this series. So this one's ocean. And um, this is kind of like the bingos that I have. So I have a bird bingo and a bug bingo that we really love. And I almost bought the ocean bingo, but, you know, to mix it up a little bit. Um, so this you put kind of in a pattern. It goes all the way around. It's double-sided, so um, you can't really memorize where these are as easily. Um, so you lay all this down on the table. And then um, once you have kind of that whole um, pattern built, then um, you have these cards that you pop out and you're trying to find these on the page. And we learn so much by um, doing things like this that my kids have to find. And then when they find something, we can discuss about that particular, um, that particular animal. And um, we love these, so I'm really hoping that we like this one and I will let you know in the review at the end um, how much we like this compared to the bingo games that we absolutely adore. Okay, so I have this Ravensburg puzzle. This is great, a uh, great puzzle for my daughter. So it's for four and up. She's five. It's only 35 pieces. So this is something that I can give her and it'll take her, you know, anywhere from 20 minutes to a half an hour to put together. So that's a great puzzle for her. And then for my son um, and my daughter can probably put this one together. Um, this is a 64 um, puzzle. We actually have a couple of these in this series that I like because it's a search and find. So you have to find all of these little guys within the puzzle. And then um, these tend to be pretty easy for them to do together. So um, we love those. And the puzzle pieces for this, sorry, before I move on, the puzzle um, pieces in this puzzle are oh, it's hard to open. It's, it's really nice and thick cardboard, so I feel like these will last for quite a while and are good for little kids. And then I have this um, seashell poster that I plan on putting up. Hopefully the glare isn't too bad, but it's a seashell poster. It's beautiful. It's pretty big. I'd say it's maybe 18 by 24 inches or maybe a little larger. But um, I plan on hanging this in um, the kitchen area with the table, which will be our homeschool kind of area as well. And um, what I plan on doing with this is maybe laying it on the table a couple days and doing a lot of shell identification. So my parents... Sorry, let me move that out of the way. My parents are hippies. They live in an RV and they travel across the United States. And one of their favorite things to do is visit beaches all across the United States and shell collect. So because they're in an RV, which is such a small little space, and because they have to worry about kind of the weight of that space, my mom leaves a lot of things at my house to hold for her. So she left her seashell collection and I went through it with her permission and I pulled a bunch of things and then she helped me make sure that I identified them correctly with a Zoom call. So we have, I'm not going to show you all of these, but we have all of these incredible seashells that we're going to be using um, in this unit. So this is a barnacle that we're going to be um, identifying. And what I might do with all of these is I might um, laminate little cards on what they are with a picture and then have my children try to identify some of these or we might use the poster I haven't quite decided um, I'm going to definitely use these um, for display um, when uh, for this unit and um, when we're actually at the beach and we just can talk about the various different things and then my kids can touch them and hold them and yeah, we're gonna, I'm super excited about this. I'm so thankful that my mom collected all of these and washed them all and scrubbed them down and helped me identify some. And then I did buy um, one set of things which were from Amazon, which were sea urchins and starfish, just because she didn't have any of those or I didn't have any of those here. Maybe she has some in the RV, but um, I didn't have any of those here. 
and I wanted to talk about those. Oh, actually, I do see one of the little ones that I purchased. So this is one of the ones that I purchased, and I'm not going to take it out because they're so delicate, but um, there is the sea urchin, and then you could see the starfish, and you can even see that one of the broke, but the other two are intact, so I'm really happy that at least two of them came because I know how delicate these are, and um, I had purchased um, some, what are they called? They're jeweler lenses, so they're tiny. They're like tulip sized or um, I don't know, like silver dollar sized. And um, they have a little light on them and you could tie them onto a string and you could pop them open. And I saw another mom on YouTube who was using them for a geology unit. And I was like, oh, that would be fantastic to kind of have as a lanyard around my kids' necks that they could kind of have them on beach walks when we go explore and they could use them as kind of little mini microscopes in the field. So I'm super excited to get those and I'm sure that you'll see those in one of my haul videos if you like watching haul videos. I have um, Amazon and, and um, Rainbow Resource and other places that I purchase from. I do kind of curriculum haul, extra haul books and um, fun things that I find that I love that we like to use in our homeschool. So that is it for this particular unit. Um, I hope that you find these helpful of how kind of I pull a unit together and the resources that we're going to use. And then again, I will be doing a um, review of all of this at the end when we get back from the beach. So um, I hope you have a great day and happy homeschooling.